Connecting this particular team, the was a situation where in our country and also in the other uh, developing countries, we found that money laundering, scams and money laundering is a very big issue. And uh, it is giving a lot of trouble uh, to all these countries, particularly the developing countries. And uh, Bangladesh ranks is in the 33rd position, 33rd position in a country of 140, uh, as it was highlighted by the IMF. And uh, this is not a very good sign, really. And most of this money are going to the Swiss banks and uh, some other institutions. I've also found that while uh, being a consultant, the World Bank consultant, to some of these banks here, uh, I found that the nationalized commercial banks, particularly, they were having a big problem as far as capital adequacy was concerned because of two very important uh, reasons. Number one, there were a lot of losses, there were a lot of defaulters, and uh, they found that the capital adequacy was not there. The result was the money had to be pumped in by the government. And uh, this was not a very happy situation that every year in the budget, there was a certain amount kept specifically to be pumped into these nationalized commercial banks. So that is one area that we should try to see. And, uh, even give recommendations because some of the banks do require a merger. Now, as far as the default loan is concerned, that is increasing at a massive scale. And that is not a good sign at all. Unfortunately, the sponsors of the They have a tendency to feel that they are the owners of the bank and that all the assets, the deposits, everything belongs to them. There's a very strong tendency to take off the money from various situations where money is laundered and it lands up in Swiss banks and other banks. Here, I would say that the stronger governance is required by the Bangladesh Bank and uh, some of the other institutions, each of these banking institutions, they have their own inspection and audit departments. That needs to be strengthened. As far as this budgeting is concerned, these are very difficult times. And uh, I think that uh, we have had a very steady growth rate. 2020, it was 5.2%, and this year it is 6.8%. And uh, interestingly, our reserve is in excess of 45 billion US dollars, 45 billion, and there's a steady flow of uh, remittances from the Middle Eastern countries. Uh, the earnings of these wage earners, Bangladeshi, and that has kept us afloat in excess of 20, 22 billion US dollars every year. Now, for the first time, uh, Bangladesh gave a loan of 200 million US dollars to Sri Lanka, and uh, they were in big trouble. Sri Lanka's uh, reserves dropped to 400 million US dollars and there was a payment that has to be made which was equal to 400 million US dollars. 
and the Prime Minister was here from Sri Lanka, met our PM, and she agreed to give 200 million US dollars. So this is for the first time that Bangladesh has given a loan to another uh, South Asian country. Now with this, I would like to hand over, uh, we have a lot of, a huge panel of speakers are here and uh, we hope to enjoy this session. And thank you, all the guests, special guests, the chief guest, Dr. Amita Singh, and uh, the panelists, and our CEO, who will be here as the coordinator. He is the moderator. And uh, our Dr. Nilifa Karim. Thank you very much, sir. Please go ahead. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor Dr. Akbaruddin Ahmed, and I would like to welcome to you all to this uh, ninth Policy Research Center Bangladesh International Online Online Conference. And uh, by now you are aware of today's uh, of today's uh, topic: scams, money laundering through people. National Budget 2021. And since we'll be having this budget in Bangladesh in June and also in the South Asian countries. So uh, based on that, perhaps this discussion on money laundering, on scams, on banking, banking and financial institutions, and also the challenges, how to achieve, how to make a pro-people uh, budget. Uh, it is very, it is more or less common in this part of the world. So based on that, I believe today's topic would be of great interest. Uh, and let me look at a little bit uh, on about the Policy Research Center, what we are doing at Policy Research Center. Uh, well, uh, it has been about more than two, more than two decades or so. We have been engaged uh, in this research organization, uh, uh, research activities, and uh, we have been, the important issues we are looking at, especially related to, uh, you know, this uh, capital market, banking, budgeting, environment development, sustainable development goal, millennium development goal, and so climate change, uh, disaster risk reduction, so and so forth. So these are, the, uh, these are the topics we have been working on. We have been conducting uh, monthly webinars for last so many months monthly uh, a webinar we have been conducting that we are also bringing out research papers and uh, before the covid days we were participating in a number of uh, national and international conferences related to uh, uh, related to talk uh, on topical interest so uh, and by now we have a good number of books we have authored a book uh, we have got book chapters in in, in uh, published by reputed organizations. So uh, Policy Research Center Bangladesh PRCBD is by now has earned a good uh, reputation. And uh, so from that perspective, I believe that our association with the PRCBD would be of great help, would bring some dividend to, to our, to our you know, career in, 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 in future course of time. Let me look at uh, today's panel. Uh, to this panel, we have the keynote speaker. Uh, we have the we have the keynote speaker, Mr. Tofajil Hussein. He is the member of Institute Institute of Chartered Accountants of Bangladesh, uh, ICAB. We have uh, uh, after uh, after this keynote keynote paper, we have got a series of uh, 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 series of resource papers by uh, Dr. M. Shahalam, who is a noted banker and a financial analyst. We have Mr. Abdul Latif Mahmoud Shumon, who is the who is in the faculty, who is a faculty of the Department of Economics, World University of Bangladesh. And uh, now we have Rais Ahmed, Research Fellow, University of Kashmir. So these are the three uh, three more speakers followed by the keynote speaker. After that, we have got designated. We have got designated discussant. Uh, we have 
Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Sabira Islam, Royal Global University, Gohati, Assam. Dr. Chandra Upadhyaya, Assistant uh, Professor of Sociology, Tilghuvan University, Nepal, and then Cornel Ashafal Dean, with a noted educationist and scholar and Islamic thinker and honorable advisor of PRCBT. Uh, after this designated discussion, uh, perhaps we will try to squeeze around five or 10 minutes or so on question answer, open discussion and so. And after that, we have the guest of honor, on, uh, guest of honor and guest of, uh, and chief guest. Our guest of honor today is Professor Dr. Siri Hetize, who is a Professor Emeritus of University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. And our chief guest is Professor Dr. Amita Singh. Uh, Professor of Law, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. He's, she is also the president of the NAPSIPAC Center of Disaster Research. Now, uh, and uh, by now we are aware that uh, this, this uh, conference is being chaired by Professor Dr. Akbaruddin Ahmed, the chairman of the PRCBT, and Nilufar Hai Karim, Dr. Nilufar Hai Karim, she, is, she, will be the, she will be the master of the ceremony of today. Now let me share. Uh, let me uh, let me give you some housekeeping and announcements. And that is, please mute your speaker while not speaking. Please mute your mute your speaker while not speaking. And uh, but you can you can you can keep your camera on. That could be on on. And uh, we are trying to uh, wind, uh, we are trying to have this program within an hour and a half. And uh, so we have a really pretty attached schedule. So I would request all the speakers to, uh, to remain within the time limit, to remain within the time limit. Now, do we have the keynote speaker by now? Mr. Tofajal Hussein, Nilufar, do we have the keynote speaker by now? He's not here yet. Yes? He's not here yet. I can't yes. See him. Is then he we can now? go ahead with the with the next speaker. Okay, we can go with the next speaker. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it, it may have uh, Mr. Tofajal Hussain will, will join soon. So before, uh, in that case, let me go to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, well, in that case, let us hear the three, three speakers, you know, their papers. To start with uh, Dr. Shalom. So I request Dr. Shalom, uh, to you know, uh, to present his paper, who is a noted banker and a finan financial inst inst financial oh. analyst, Dr. Shalom. Over to you. And, uh, and Walikum Salam, you have got ten minutes. Ten minutes is long time. Uh, uh, thank you for attending such uh, conference uh, on a vital uh, issues. Uh, I go clearly. Uh, about STEM, the little meaning of STEM is a trick used for uh, cheating someone out of something, especially money. Uh, STEM is also called cheat to split someone in such a way. If I say an example that bank will never call you asking for your credit card number of uh, social security number over the phone. If someone calls and asks for information like that, it is a scam. Uh, the little meaning of scam is uh, fraud, deception, racket, uh, cheating, uh, dirty pool, double cross, etc. Public health agencies for instance are already using next door to announce a vaccination plan into uptake or vaccine distribution connecting locals with the front and warning about potential vaccine scams. A supply of email accounts with a strong reputation from which send the scam mails. This is an example. Uh, I found two roommates and they cheap 
spacious apartment, but the apartment is turned out to be a scam. This is especially the case given past controversies involving crowd-funded investment opportunities, which some cases have proved to be outright steps. Can you please have a louder voice, please? The voice, little louder. Louder, louder. Uh, it's okay. Okay. Now. okay. <laughs> Earning ownership had become to feel like a scam, even when it came to the things that we felt made life worth living. Uh, let the victims profit in the first round or two of the scam. Another example is are not properly recognized, may come apart at the scam. Uh, I think about scams and infinity. Uh, let me go to the next topic. It is the money laundering. Money laundering is the illegal process of making large amounts of money generated by criminal activity such as drug trafficking or terrorist funding appear to have come from a legitimate source. The money from the crime activity is considered dark and the process launders is to make it look clean. Money laundering is a serious financial crime. It is employed by white color and street level criminals alike. Most financial companies have anti-money laundering AMN, AMN policies in place to detect and prevent this activity. Money laundering is the illegal process of making dirty money appear legitimate instead of being got. Criminals use uh, a wide variety of money laundering techniques to make illegally obtained funds appear to be clean. Online banking has made it easier for criminals to transfer and withdraw money without detection. The prevention of money laundering has become an international effort and now includes terrorist funding among its targets. Money laundering is essential for criminal organizations that wish to use illegally obtained money effectively. Dealing large amounts of illegal cash is inefficient and dangerous. Criminals need a way to deposit the money in legitimate financial institutions, yet they can only do so if it appears to come from legitimate systems. Looks like looks like Dr. Shalom is stuck. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Placement put the dirty money into legitimate financial systems. Layering conceals the source of money through a series of transactions and bookkeeping tricks. In the final state, integration. In
afraid Dr. Shaolam is having internet problem. Dr. Shaolam is having internet problem. <clears throat> There are many ways to launder money from the simple to the very complex. One of the most common techniques is to use a legitimate cash-based business owned by a criminal organization. For example, if the organization owns a restaurant, it might inflate the daily cash receipts to funnel illegal cash to the restaurant. And Dr. Shalom, you have two minutes only. You have two minutes only. Thank you. Uh, understand he is having internet problem, unstable internet. Yeah, I think you could join later. Okay, uh, I request I Dr. Shalom yeah. Obal, you may like to. Uh, could you? I you are having some problem, internet problem. I understand. Yeah, yeah, I see. You see. Yes, exactly. Sometimes you can. So I that being so, you can, you can join us later. Is that okay? Okay. 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 Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. In that case, uh, uh, yes, uh, we, have been, we were listening to Dr. Shalom, and uh, it may happen that in a, a later stage, he may join us uh, whenever his connection is much better. So let's go to Mr. Abdul Latif Mahmoud Shumon. He is a faculty in the Department of Economics, World University of Bangladesh, uh, and also a senior research associate of ERCBD. So over to Mr. Abdul Latif Mahmoud Shumon. So Mr. Mahmoud, yeah, yes, you are yes, there. Yes. Yeah, Latif is there. So yes. floor is here. Yours, <clears throat> you have 10 minutes. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank Policy Research Center BD, an independent think tank for arranging such a important international conference, scams and money laundering, pro people national budget, 2020, 2021 fiscal year, and inviting me as a special as a speaker. Special thanks to today's session chair and honorable Chairman, Professor Dr. Akbaruddin Ahmed, and the CEO, ERC, Honorable Chief Guest, and other distinguished guests. Like economy of other countries, banking sector plays a vital role to the national economy in any country. It contributes to many arms of economy, like agriculture, industry, power, transport, trade, service, etc. And in Bangladesh, when all other macroeconomic indicators has been declining due to COVID-19, but good news is that the remittance earnings of Bangladesh are increasing during COVID-19 pandemic as the government and the central bank took several initiatives to boost it. But the banking sector as a whole has been struggling to survive in the last couple of years. Most of the banks are in trouble regarding loan default, high non-performing loans, and other issues. The pandemic situation has made the situation worse for the whole economy. The banking sector, a vital player in a country's monetary and fiscal system, continues to face the rate of the COVID-19 pandemic. And now, money laundering, what it creates, 
money laundering creates macroeconomic distortion not only macroeconomic distortion but it largely destroying the country's economy or socio economy in various ways a number of report released by the global financial integrity in recent times have pinpoint bangladesh as being among the worst affected countries of a trade based money laundering and illicit financial flows are the most damaging economic problems faced by the world's developing and emerging economies according to gfi's president this means we are among the countries worst plagued by one of the biggest problems among all the problems out there that developing countries are having to deal with and non performing loan are considered as the most important in indicators identifying problems with asset quality and government of bangladesh dictated the credit disbursement in the early years and the political influence also played its part the decision making for sanctioning loans for the banking sector besides state owned enterprises also borrowed from banking sector and these loans were never fully repaid the privatization process along with the financial sector reforms with globalization necessitated further impetus in the process of reform the reforms should continue for smooth functioning of the financial market and in bangladesh loan scam in banking sector in bangladesh we have seen embezzlement of hallmark group bismillah group basic bank has become talk of the country the loan scam is alarming for our banking as well as well as the financial sector the problem of banking sector is quite spread is not only to the banking sector only or banking system only the regulatory entity should be independent but accountable and prudential regulation should be limited to deposit taking institutions and it should be clearly separated from non prudential regulation and so steps should be taken to make the banking sector stable otherwise country might miss the target of revenue collection because of large amount of tax comes from this source an effective legal framework provides the central bank with necessary power for improvement in supervision and regulatory capacity and the strengthening of enforcement of prudential guidelines and here it is important that no bank no new bank should be allowed by political considerations and recapitalization should be stopped and poor monitoring responsible for financial fraud and the country has had enough lessons from the scams so it is time that the monitoring mechanism already in place to check the irregular irregularities so we have to ensure the people's trust in the country's financial management and bangladesh government is going to place budget in the upcoming fiscal year 2020 and 2021 which is 6% of the country's gross domestic product surpassing the typical red line of a 5% deficit and uh, we hope the national budget would reflect much needed reforms for the stabilizing the country's annual banking sector and in the budget for fiscal year 2020 and 21 there were no steps identified for reforming the banking sector although the backbone of the country's economy is the banking sector thank you very much and thank you all
Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Latif, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Latif Mahmoud. Uh, you are very much within the time. And, uh, but uh, you, you said that you got the ball, ball rolling, in fact, as we have the challenges of a pro people budget, not only for Bangladesh, but also for, uh, but also for this part of the world. So based on that, we'll continue our discussion. Now, uh, we have, uh, do we have Mr. Rais Ahmed by now? Can somebody help me? I have not seen Mr. Rais Ahmed from uh, the he, University he, of Kashmir. Have anybody? He, he's not there. He's Is there. he there? No, 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 no. He's not there. He's unwell. Okay. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. Rai Samet, Mr. Rai Samet couldn't make it. Now, uh, uh, do we see the keynote speaker back, um, present by now, Tofajal Hussein? I also have not seen Mr. Tofajal Hussein as of now. He's not here. So, not, here. Uh, not sir. It's still not sir. Oh, okay. Okay. So now we have designated discussant. We are lucky to have all the three designated discussant with us. Although the topics, uh, mostly uh, we couldn't uh, de deliver it more. Uh, we have... uh, Dr. Mahfuz, can I have a word? Yes. A suggestion, I have this, it's a, money, a suggestion, Arki, say, since we have got the paper submitted by Mr. Tofajal Hussain, maybe he has got some problem. Kintu paper ta amadha ka after a to pour then, the audience will understand what he wanted to mean. He wanted to present. Great, great. Can uh, you present the paper on behalf of him? Colonel Ashraf. Colonel Ashraf. Colonel Ashraf, he has a paper. So can you present it? Sorry, I, I, I'm not an economist. I'm not an economist. I'm not an economist. I beg your uh, pardon. It will be good. I think let it continue. Maybe he'll come in and join. Let the next speaker come in. Okay. Yeah. So what do we do? I mean, uh, uh, in uh, because I thought that the maybe the discussant will come later on. Um, we have the discussant. So um, we are lucky to have all the three discussants dis yeah, discussant with us. That's right. Yeah, they should go ahead. So. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> we'll go ahead. But I was thinking that to get some more uh, more meat to chew, because uh, you know there are the issues are to be are to be are to be are to be brought brought in front in front of us. Uh, the issues of money laundering, the issue of uh, you know this uh, you know uh, uh, this flight of capital, shifting of funds, non -perform, non non performing loans by the banks. So these are the very uh, uh, burning issues, not only in, in, in our country, or also in many countries of this region. So perhaps some more, uh, some more uh, discussion could have, been, uh, could, have been, uh, could have been expected. In that case, uh, fine. So we can go to the directly to the uh, designated discussant. But before that, I would like to, uh, I, would, I would like, uh, I could see the, uh, uh, Dr. Nakib Muslim is here, who is the former secretary of the government of Bangladesh. Uh, I, you know, some point of time, he would be uh, making his uh, some uh, some uh, some po uh, some comments as well later on. So let's go, let's go ahead with the discussion. Uh, we have okay. Professor, Professor Dr. Sabera Islam. She is uh, in Royal Global University, of Gauhati, Assam. So, Professor Dr. Sabira Islam, so what to you? You have to unmute yourself. Professor Dr. Sabira Islam, you have to unmute yourself. Yes, please do unmute yourself. And can you lower your camera? We can't see you. Can you lower your camera? Can you lower your camera? 
Sagar Islam, you have a camera tech in the number. I know you, you understand Bangla very well. You are from Gohati Assam. So, the camera tech is going to be able to see you. Please go ahead. I said, good evening. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes. very yes. much. So, good evening to everybody and assalamu alaikum. Wa yeah. alaikum. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Professor Akburuddin and uh, Dr. Nilufa Karim for so kindly uh, having me here. Actually, uh, I was uh, doing a study about the barriers to trade between India and Bangladesh. Uh, that was actually a study which the government had asked us to do. And uh, in fact, uh, I think we can be optimistic of the fact that uh, good things may happen. Since today, they had again told me that once, uh, but actually right now, pandemic is slowing down many things. We had the uh, elections, and then now the pandemic is, ra is raging, but I believe officials, some things are, you know, uh, kind of, they are taking it up seriously. And I think this at least policy, which the government of India has adopted, uh, they are quite serious about it. And uh, while trying to make a study, I came across, I was very lucky to come across Professor Akburuddin and uh, Nilufa, uh, Dr. Nilufa Kari. So thank you very much. But uh, at the very outset also, I would like just let me tell you something. Uh, we were very busy with research meetings. In fact, the meeting got over. I, I was late, late in logging in simply because I was in the meeting of the university regarding research work. So I'm not really uh, prepared with the topic as you have, uh, you know, uh, titled money laundering and uh, pro budget, pro people budget. I'll just give a few uh, ideas or, you know, thoughts which I know about money laundering. Uh, of course, I quickly looked up the uh, helpful Google. Uh, first of all, we all know the difference between the meaning of scam and money laundering. I mean, the, my previous, I heard it from the previous, I think two speakers. So I won't waste time on it. But uh, money laundering has been going on in India for a long time. And it has affected the corporate world very badly. Now, uh, this first effect of a when, uh, when a company fails, a company, some corporation doesn't do well, it actually sends out very bad signals to the world. And people will think that, you know, India is not a good place to invest. So, uh, the government is trying very hard to bring uh, to keep these uh, long, uh, uh, a strict vigilance so that these kind of uh, laundering uh, is kept at the minimum. But then, however, I don't think uh, it will be kind of removed just with one swipe. It will take time. And uh, now that the world is becoming more and more digitalized, uh, although we say that it is good because work is done fast, it's good work is done fast, but then I think uh, it also brings in a lot of dangers with it because uh, you can't really read what is going on in a person's mind without looking at the person, you know, personally, meaning physically. So one of the very fundamental, uh, fundamental effects of digitalization is we don't have eye contact to understand and understand what is going on really in the other person's mind. Anyway, 
as i've just told you that uh, the reputation of the company is eroded and when this happens other uh, intending investors they hesitate to come in india we have been india has been depending a lot on mdis and fiis our money market is quite robust actually the macro fundamentals of india of late was you know quite stable uh, but then uh, the pandemic has uh, brought the growth rate down and again there is confusion and uh, we don't know how much the economy is suffering i mean at least i am not in a position to quote quote any figures but definitely in this time the second uh, the second pandemic the second time it's worse than the first time the first pandemic saw a great exodus of laborers to the to the village to their own places this time of course that exodus is uh, being controlled it is under control however economic activities i have slowed down and so it will be difficult to say what will be the outcome of this uh, present uh, pandemic and although the government as i have said is uh, keeping a vigilant eye the reserve bank of india has its along with it uh, the sebi they are monitoring the finances of the of the corporate world and uh, money laundering is actually trying to be you know controlled however i'll just give you a few examples of the companies which really were doing very well uh, i mean public thought it was doing very well but they had to be rescued one was satyam the satyam was the first major fraud in india perhaps in bangladesh you'll know about it and uh, but satyam what satyam the experience in india was really very big it shook everybody that such a big it company was actually based on fraud however the person who built up this com this company his uh, technical knowledge was very good so the company by the the technical part of it was all right it was the finances which was in ruins so the government hauled it up and they uh, they uh, they appointed uh, one of the board members called deepak parik and uh, he is still trying to you know um, bring back satyam to the old status then uh, they, they, uh, can you can you can you can you kindly tell me the time how much time i have no please uh, ma'am ma'am ma 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 me uh, maybe you may like to take couple of minutes more thank you uh, uh but what is the actual time i am allowed uh you are allowed 10 minutes time you have already okay. passed your 10 minutes oh, you have already passed your 10 minutes okay, so you okay. can take you can okay. take two more minutes yes then I, then i don't think i should read out the names of the companies which uh, suffered because of because of uh, pandemic Now the thing is, one of the uh, I mean uh, the other okay quickly I'll say there was Kingfisher Airlines which you might have heard of. Then uh, there was Kingfisher Airlines. There was Jet Airways, and then we all Jet Airways, which was so well known all over the world. In fact, that crashed because of uh, because of bad management monetarily. Then we have Bushan Steel. then they uh, we also have uh, the uh, very recently one of the nationalized banks punjab national bank uh, it was not the fault of the punjab national bank it was one of the clients who took the punjab national bank for a nice long, long ride and uh, it was uh, that person neera those two people neera modi and mehul choksi who are still uh they are still not to be found actually i think they are the uk and india is trying to bring them back but they are uh, absconding 
So this kind of thing still is still going on. Uh, this uh, the amount of money which they had laundered is around sixteen thousand crores, and uh, it's a huge amount. However, Punjab National Bank, since it's a robust bank, it's uh, you know continuing its activities well. So, and uh, what do these uh, what do these kind of laundering have? Uh, what kind of effects do they have on the economy? First of all, as I I had said. You know, these emerging uh, economies, we are an emerging economy. We, uh, a, lot of, a lot depends on our reputation. So when uh, other countries were uh, uh, come to our money market to invest in our money market, that will be kind of discouraged. And, uh, but uh, hopefully it won't be that bad this time. Then we have, uh, uh, because of this, we, you have many other people who will want to do the same thing. They want to break the regulations of the anti-money laundering regulations. They think that the system is still weak. Is they think that the government lacks funds to, you know, uh, revamp the companies. So they still have it. There we still have thieves, and we still have money laundering going around. But uh, the Reserve Bank of India, they have taken some major steps, major uh, anti-laundering money, anti-laundering uh, measures with which the companies or anybody who, anybody who wants to do business, they have to comply by those regulations. And uh, if they don't comply by those regulations, then they, you know they just uh, they'll just have to put an end to it. One of this is the Yes Bank. The Yes Bank was also doing well apparently, but they did not comply by the regulations, which was uh, laid out by the RBI, and it just closed down. And another one was that Cafe Coffee Day, which is an international brand, and for some reason in India, it's not doing well. And of course, the children, they like to go to cafe coffee day. So uh, other parts like the Tata group, right now the Tata group is trying to uh, bring it up because the original the people who, uh, who own the franchisee, they have lost out. They, uh, they actually lost around 3,000 crores of rupees. And now the Tata group is in talks with CCD and they're trying to bring it back into the market. But uh, as I've just said, that uh, the negative effects of this thing is not just encouraging other, other money launderers, it is the general people, the general people whose lives depend on the salaries. Oh, Hello. Hello. Now yes, go ahead. go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Sabir Islam. You go ahead. Yeah. So the thing is, who is affected the most? The people who are affected are the, the people who, are, uh, who have small salaries. They lose their jobs. Their, their families are affected. Everybody is affected. The person who is on top, who has embezzled, he has flown the country. He's gone, he's gone away and he's uh, in asylum somewhere else. But the rest of the people who are working in that company, they are the ones who are affected, especially the lower levels. The whole entire families are destroyed. And is the government in a position to rehabilitate so many families? No, they are not. And money laundering, as uh, most people see it, uh, embezzlement, we think of you know, terrorism. It is, it is linked with terrorism. So uh, I'm not very sure if the money laundering from India was linked with terrorism, but that's what everybody normally says that, you know, laundering means the money goes for smuggling, meaning narcotics or for terrorism. And these are evils that have to be, that have to be uh, stopped because it is not just one country which will be affected. All the countries with whom India is uh, connected by international trade, 
or cultural relations or whatever, everybody, everybody will be affected because the, the shocks, the economical shocks, the cultural shocks, they don't just stay in one place, they trickle down and they spread out. So I think uh, as a community, as a whole, not just in our case, India, uh, Bangladesh is our neighbor, Bhutan is our neighbor, Nepal is a neighbor. I, I feel that as an economy together, we, we act, we should act together and put an end to this uh, whole thing called money laundering because individually we all have our own figures. We have our figures and we have the facts that uh, so much money has gone out of the country. So many companies have become bankrupt and this and that. But how do we stop it? How do we stop this uh, evil which is affecting the economy of the world? How do we stop it? We stop it by acting together, by coming together and economic integrating, economically integrating together. As I know, we have BBIN or we have Bangladesh and India, uh, maybe uh, bilateral trade. I don't know about free, free trade. We, I think we have bilateral trade. But if we act together, if we integrate, if we are open to each other, I think we can go a long way, a long, long way to stop money laundering. And uh, uh, one more thing, uh, actually, although I don't feel like saying it, there are agents in every, every, uh, every uh, department, let us say law and order or the customs or anywhere, there will be somebody who is supporting this, who is supporting this kind of money being shifted here and there with its banking officials. But we should be able to overcome them. We should be able to, you know, see before them. We should be able to, we should be one step ahead of them so that this laundering doesn't take place so that the lives, the families, the economies of these small families, where in a country like India, at least we are still, we are still emerging. We, uh, we have a huge, huge section of the population who are below the poverty line still. But of course, the, uh, the middle class has, our middle class has uh, risen, meaning a large, proportion of the population has come under the middle class bracket and a very small portion in the top they own around I mean a huge site a huge chunk of the GDP goes to them I will not go to the figure but uh, around 20% uh, of the top in uh, uh, rich people own a huge chunk of our natural income next comes the middle class but the ones who are in the lower section of the society right now as of today it is pitiable they don't have internet facilities to have online classes they don't have electricity maybe drinking water i don't know it is very sad so if we come together and stop this money laundering this black marketeering i think all of us are going to gain and as neighbors we should help each other thank you very much i'll stop here Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Savar Islam. Sir, now, uh, we have, yes, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Savar Islam. Now, um, uh, now uh, we have, uh, uh, well, we got some experience, Indian experience. Now we'll go to some, we'll get some Nepalese experience from that perspective. Uh, so I would like to give the floor to Dr. Chandra over there who is the assistant professor of, uh, of sociology of Tribhuvan University of Nepal. So Dr. Chandra Upadhyaya, floor is yours. You have got 10 minutes. You have got 10 minutes, please. Thank you very much, Akshay. Uh, thank you, dear president, Nilufa ma'am, and all the dignitaries present here. I expected you, sir, please to welcome Amita ma'am. She is already with us here. Uh, oh, yes, yes, uh, uh, may, uh, yes, we welcome Professor Ramita Singh, who is the former professor of law of Jalan Nehru University. Professor Ramita Singh, yes, we. Uh, uh, well, in the chat, we chat box, we saw her uh, welcoming, uh, you know, you know, wishing us all, Professor Ramita Singh. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. 
after that thank you, yeah thank you very yes. much sir yes thank you very much sir. go ahead go ahead yeah i i once again thank for this opportunity uh all of you know i am a student of sociology but uh to be a part of this type of discussion is really a learning platform for me i have learned a lot from the previous speakers uh as a sociologist i always prefer to talk issues pro people because my discipline itself says that sociology is the study and research of people i do study about nepalese people i do research about the nepalese people being a nepali faculty here uh yes i do speak pro people maybe it a budget or a vaccine or any relief everything should be pro people as i said in our informal discussion before uh unfortunately this country is going to have this year's budget tomorrow and the budget is coming through an ordinance it's unfortunate for the country we had a two third majority government 3 years ago and due to the political coalition their own working style they split it and people are having the rule of ordinance in this country again let's hope stable democracy will come a day and people will be more uh hopeful more helpful a uh, government will be helpful for the people however i still try to do justice uh to this panel today to this presence today as per my study here in nepal the issue of money laundering is quite new issue here in the country because the country had its anti money laundering act on 2008 the country might realize it that there should be some regulations at least for uh the wrong money the money that is un wrongly the money that comes from other countries wrongly so as it though it's a new issue as already uh agurdan sir said i often read news here that some people from nepal do have money in swiss banks sometimes i wonder what the swiss bank is and how money reaches there and why the money doesn't come back if it's true if it's fact why those news do come who are the so rich people in my country who have that amount of money who take them to swiss bank hope the bank will cooperate the government of nepal the true government of nepal the democratic government of nepal or do justice to the people of nepal and let them know the sources a day will come when people will know is it really that that amount of money is there uh it's surprising uh in a situation like this pandemic nepal had a long political transition political instability a big earthquake in 2015 and this pandemic uh despite those challenges the country must try to stand to grow and to address the issues of people even the basic minimum needs of the people uh nepal try to digitize its economy it might be a need it might be an obligation for the country but unfortunately few months back huge amount of money was almost stolen from our banks by a group of chinese fortunate that someone could catch them otherwise the country might have been looted already <clears throat> nepal's economy demands foreign investment and sometimes when i follow the news i find that the government welcomes money from anybody and from anywhere this is risky i think economists might suggest this might be very risky what money is coming to nepal and from where it is coming if government welcomes 
everyone's money. Nepal, if request any country, any donor, any uh, NRN, non-residential Nepalese, or anybody else to invest in Nepal, that might be a risk. Uh, but Nepal doesn't have any, any um, uh, such restrictions that we will not receive money from these and these countries or these and these sources. Rather, Nepal appeals for support. Even these days, Nepalese government has been appealing publicly to the world community to support to fight this pandemic. And that, that support may be in any form, maybe in cash or kind. So that's a risk. Um, the country's economy, the country's economy has suffered a lot because Nepalese economy is highly based on remittance. Uh, one of my former speakers said that uh, uh, Bangladesh remittance did not decrease. Uh, we did also have that type of situation in the initial three months of, of this lockdown. And when, when all our uh, workers in other countries, all the laborers had to return back to the country. They came back with all the money they could collect. And I think that was the final amount they could have. But the months that followed, they did not have any income. So this country is mainly based on remittance from foreign employment. That has been closed. The country is suffering. And tourism is another source of income of the country. And tourism industry is shut down, it's closed. So in such a situation, the country's economy is really suffering. And the growth rate, economic growth rate, it was estimated 7.5% when the government was there. But now in between it went to almost negative curve and the government is still unable to predict what level of economic growth the country will have in the coming fiscal year. So today's topic, money laundering, as I said, money laundering is a new issue for Nepal. Nepal made law just 12 years back. It's good that the country realized that there are some scam, there are some issues that, they, that the impure money, that the But this has not been, there has not been any such action. We could, we could realize that yes, this has been done, or this was the big issue, this was the big piece that is caught, and the country is gaining something from it. But the country is suffering from a great crisis, in fact. I think it was during 1967 when Professor David Staden uh, wrote a book, Nepal in Crisis. A few months back, he had another lecture for Nepalese people, Nepalese scholar, where he said, Nepal again in crisis. So there is instability, political instability, and this type of pandemic situation, uh, the country is suffering. As I said, tomorrow we are going to have a budget, though, though the public opinion is, let the budget be come for three months or four months, not for an annual budget, but the government is trying to give the full year budget. Let's see what comes. Uh, we people are not much hopeful, but we have no other option too. The country, the government is appealing the world community for support every day. Uh, we had similar situation when we had a blockade, economic blockade. We had some money floating in the market and even the government was of parallel governance around because money was floating, because money was not in the control of people. And black marketing, as some of my uh, former speakers said, that's rising every day in the country because Nepal is dependent. As I said earlier, Nepal is dependent from its uh, food supplies to medicine or equipment. So when people try to take advantage of this type of pandemic situation or 
the previous earthquake and they try to accumulate more and more money and there is no proper uh, mechanism to control, obviously the country suffers. And we people still uh, hope that there will be a good uh, reasonable collaboration among the countries, South Asian countries or globally so that Nepal can good, uh, get a good path, good guideline, good suggestion or good partnership so that they can, the government can work really through people. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank, you, uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra from Nepal. Uh, we wish you good luck in your, uh, in your budget uh, announcement. Uh, your no. budget is being placed uh, your budget is being placed tomorrow, as you understand. I will draw your attention, so, Mr. Mahaprabhu. Dr. Draw Shalom, I will I'll give you the floor later on. Please hang on. Thank you, I will man. give you the floor later on. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Now, after after the Nepalese experience, can we go to again uh, Colonel Ashraf al Din, who is a noted educationist and a scholar and Islamic thinker. Uh, he is the honorable advisor of PRCBD. So, uh, Colonel Ashraf al Din, you have got 10 minutes for you. We have 10 minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. Mahfuz. Um, today, actually, we are discussing without the keynote paper, um, but I have got, uh, I have gone through the paper, but um, somehow in the paper, he has talked about the taxes and then the other things uh, uh, concerning the budget, uh, but not really specific to scam and uh, money laundering. Um, he has suggested certain points like new business should be given tax, tax exemption for five years. SME and MME should get exempted from uh, audit requirements and uh, this sort of uh, things. And one interesting point he has uh, suggested, I will really appreciate is that adequate investment. I'm saying investment because actually expenditure, adequate investment in education sector for IT compliance uh, uh, gadgets, for the use of the benefit of the rural students so that they can access into online um, uh, classes. So, and then skill level and trained um, uh, management. Uh, this is what he has uh, um, given the aid. I'll talk about uh, two, three things. One is uh, about education. Number two is corruption. And then a little bit about scam and uh, money laundering. Today, uh, 28th, and uh, surprisingly, today in the Financial Express, there was a, there was a wonderful article uh, on money laundering. Actually, uh, it is written by uh, Mr. Helaluddin Ahmed, and uh, the uh, article named, titled, Causes and Cost of Money Laundering. So this uh, actually the, the fact is most of the black money generated in Bangladesh is laundered abroad. It doesn't remain in the country with only a negligible portion remaining in the country as black money, as they say. Higher levels of corruption in the article, he says, higher level of corruption are of, often associated with large underground or black economics. In a 2000, um, 2018, um, a 2018 study by IMF estimated the size of the underground economy in Bangladesh to be around 30% of our GDP. The average of the period from 1991 to 2015 being 33.39%. It, however, incorporated mostly legal economic activities and tried to overlook illegal or criminal activities such as gambling, prostitution, etc. It means if we take into consideration to those two points and other, those sectors, it will be much more than 35% or 40% of the total GDP. 
money laundered. Maximum black money is generated through transaction of um, spurious goods, drug trades, and human trafficking. According to the Washington-based think tank, Global Financial Integrity, no reliable research has been shown, has shown black money returning to the mainstream economy in a big way when opportunity of whitening is provided. Like in our budget, you will always find that about the black money, there is a lecture, there is a line. Actually, what happens? It doesn't, it doesn't really benefit our, because black money doesn't come back. In fact, the main uh, uh, destinations of black money are foreign territories. For example, large chunk of, is deposited in Swiss bank as the Swiss bank act of 1934 ensures non-divulgence of information about individual depositors. And some other money is transferred to tax havens like USA, Canada, UK, UAE, Thailand, Singapore, you name anything. And that's why we have got a saying that in Canada, we have got Begumpara. I mean, our business people, MPs, ministers, their wives, in, in their name of their wives, they have got their properties there. And you will find the largest, second largest company, second largest company in Singapore is a Bangladeshi, um, a Bangladeshi you know, company, the owner of which is no less than a minister and his brother. And so actually what happened is, now, in the, in the last paragraph, the author says, now the big question is, do the authorities really want to curb money laundering? And is the failure to hold talks with the Swiss central bank due merely to lack of required skills? Or is there dearth of official willingness? Unfortunately, despite the rhetoric of zero tolerance against corruption, there are no sustained initiatives in that direction. While hardworking people of Bangladesh, the emerging middle class, professionals, expatriate workers, and peasants have been carrying forward the country's advancement through tireless efforts. A coterie of powerful and upper class people do not pay taxes, plunder the stock market, launder money, and embezzle over, you know, overvalued projects. The common people work hard by keeping faith in the country's potentials, but others lack, lack such faith and launder money abroad. There is a protection for such crimes. This is very important. There is a protection for such crimes and the situation is unlikely to improve unless the political statements and the operational policies converge. So here, um, I'll say that in our, in our, we have got our lawmakers and you will find that almost a very, very big chunk of lawmakers are the, the, the business people. A businessman becoming a lawmaker is a crime, should be considered as a crime. Maybe there can be some business people. I think government should have policies that MPs should not be involved into the business. And uh, lawmakers, there will be some percentage, not like this. Everybody is a, everybody is a, let me give you one example. One UK minister, um, he, he was the minister during John Major. Uh, uh, and uh, um, he went to Mohammed al Fayed. He went to Paris and it was proved that when he was at Paris as a minister, uh, he stayed in the hotel owned by the father of Dodi, you know, famous Dodi, friend of uh, Diana. So, uh, Muhammad al Fayed, well, he was the host and then he stayed there without paying. This was proved in the court, in the parliament, after seven years after this minister retired. And he was taken to task and he was given punishment in UK. And let me tell you about one statement of my country. My friend has said, one minister of our country 
has gone to uh, uh, Malaysia. The first day he left the airport with the illegal traders and then money launderers, Bangladeshi staying there. He stayed with them for three days as their guest. And after three days, he came to Bangladesh embassy and said, give me protocol, I'm the minister. So this is what is the condition. And that, that is why you will be surprised when I was, I was in um, Singapore, um, uh, sorry, I was in Thailand. Um, in, from Thailand to, uh, uh, to Malaysia, you can go by train. So I wanted to move by train, but I was told by the embassy that you will not be allowed. Not only you, the red passport holder of your country are also not allowed. I said, why? Because you did not, you could not maintain your honesty. So everyone has to, in Bangladeshis, has to uh, go from Thailand to Singapore and from Singapore got to enter Malaysia. You cannot go from Thailand to Singapore, uh, uh, Malaysia street because we have lost the, lost the credibility. So if we have, um, we have got this, this, this problems, actually, uh, what is, actually we should have been today's in today's lecture we should have given more emphasis on scam and basic you know uh, the the money laundering the what is a scam dishonest scheme of fraud Colonel, Colonel, would you like to uh, wind up within two minutes time please okay well within two minutes inshallah it will be so a dishonest scheme there are a lot of schemes and people are doing it. And the scam has been detected. My earlier, um, uh, uh, you know, the uh, one le uh, lecture speaker has said about one bank, there are four banks which has come into the newspaper, Basic Bank, Shonali Bank, Janata Bank, and Farmers Bank. They are, in, in the name of the scam, they have given thousands of crore taka has been looted, from these banks as the loan and money laundering already our chairman has mentioned it uh, bangladesh from bangladesh 7.53 billion dollar worth you know it's it's it, it comes to about 64000 crore goes at a laundered money from bangladesh per year so this is a huge thing i think it is important that we take care of corruption first. If corruption is stopped, corruption can be stopped, then all this VPN business and all other things, not taking any orientation, not taking the any, any coverage of political coverage, we have to really be honest to stop corruption. If we don't stop corruption, we cannot stop this scam and money laundering and if just because of our corruption and not a good intention, uh, we, uh, we cannot stop the food adulteration, the in, uh, impurity in the, in, in the food. In our country, it is a shame for us. In our country, the economy is moving and getting destroyed. It, it, you know, too many people are suffering because of, of, of adulteration in the food. The last thing I'll say is, uh, basically, that day I was talking to a, a senior economist. He said that though our GDP growth is going and then a lot of uh, flowery things are here, but actually what is happening is the money in our country and in the whole world is now gradually getting centered into few hands. Earlier, the world money was in the hands of 20%. It came down to 11%. Now during pandemic, it has came, it has come down to money concentrated, maximum wealth concentrated in very few hands. In our country, um, we, we are showing that from outside the uh, um, uh, money is coming, but this money is coming from the black money of the companies, big companies, uh, one company sending a lot of money and that company is benefited. It's not too many people sending money. That's why I will say that we got to go to the microeconomics so that everybody is benefited. And with this, the government should, in our, in our um, budget, should take care about the, the jakat, 
because this goes to microeconomics. The zakat is collected from everybody and given to the needy. That will circulate the money more, and our our economy will grow. Inshallah. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to talk. Salam alaikum. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Colonel uh, Ashraf Al Din, and uh, uh, I would like to I would like to have Dr. Shalom to give some brief comment, very brief comments, because he he has some problem with his uh, uh, internet. So uh, it looks like uh, it, it is now okay. So maybe Dr. Uh, Shalom would give some brief comments, followed by I uh, would uh, request again uh, after Dr. Shalom, uh, maybe Dr. Naki um, Muslim is he, yeah he's around, and I can also see Dr. Adil Nanda is there. So uh, three of you uh, you may like to give some comments on this whole discussion. To start with Dr. Shalom, you have. Yeah, please do not, uh, you may not like to take more than five minutes, please. Ah, I'll continue. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank uh, Dr. Akbaddin also again. Uh, I will finish it uh, very soon. Actually, I was talking on money laundering, uh, the theoretical portion. Uh, money laundering, prevention of money laundering is very essential. And there are inter there is international body for it. And in Bangladesh, in Central Bank, there is a special unit, BFIU, uh, this financial institution, intelligence unit. Uh, they are effective, but uh, we are unfortunate that uh, central bank reserve was laundered. Uh, and you see there is a huge laundering in banks and financial institutions. We should uh, request our government to take appropriate action and disciplinary action against these launderers. Uh, that is the main thing about uh, money laundering, uh, about uh, budget, you have made a very uh, um, popular title, pro-people national budget. Actually, the national budget must be popular. And in this pandemic situation all over the world due to coronavirus, uh, this must be, must be pro-people oriented. Due to coronavirus, uh, Pandemic, pandemic uh, huge people has become jobless, starving, many people are starving. Government is aware of it. At the moment, uh, uh, everybody is uh, predicting that uh, coronavirus is not going very soon. So uh, the vital thing is to arrange a vaccine for each individual of, of the country as well as the world. The developed country are arranging it properly, but we are a uh, little bit uh, behind. But the budget uh, that has been uh, uh, announced by the Honorable uh, Finance Minister uh, has a huge provision uh, for uh, facing the pandemic uh, due to coronavirus. Uh, they are uh, trying hard to provide vaccines to all individuals. Uh, the Mm, uh, highlight of uh, the uh, budget, uh, I have seen a good paper um, produced by uh, Finance Ministry and uh, with the consent of Honorable Prime Minister uh, that indicates uh, uh, sufficient protection for this uh, pandemic cessation as well as uh, compensation packages uh, for the poor people, uh, destitute people. And uh, we, we, I tell you, we are uh, unfortunate that there is uh, natural calamities in our country frequently. Uh, so uh, there should be a uh, huge budget for facing that situation also. Government is aware of it, but uh, the budget uh, being made by the government uh, should be appropriately used. You know, there is... Uh, Misuse by the, we say, AMLAs, the ministries, that should be prevented. The Honorable Prime Minister is aware of it and he's, he's taking care of it. We should uh, request him to be more resilient to protect this situation. And the thank you so much, Dr. Shalom. Dr. Shalom, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now uh, I think we, we, we heard a lot of uh, issues related to the budget. Perhaps it is high time that we get some recommendations from you. 
we got some we get some recommendations from you what are the solutions so we know the problems by now we know the problems let us hear some recommendation and uh, I, I do have the former, I do have the former secretary of the government dr naki muslim is here he may like, he may like to say something may not be more than five minutes sir may not be more than five minutes maybe some in the form of recommendation thank you over to dr naki muslim I'm a, uh, should i talk anymore no Mr. no Mahmoud? no thank you so much thank you dr shalom thank you so much that's it can you can you can anybody hear me yes we can hear you very well quite oh, good, good. good i feel inspired now uh, uh, as part of my credential let me uh, point out that i am uh, neither a banker uh, nor uh, a very big depositor but i have some observations as a citizen of the country uh, how i perceive money laundering to be uh, i have as you say that uh, whether i have some recommendations or not first is prevention is better than cure how to prevent money laundering that can be a good approach to you know to deal with the uh, with this complicated problem that is uh, that is burgeoning uh, day by day uh, first is people are becoming very greedy nowadays at all levels greed greed for money greed for property greed for assets and they resort to foul means to satisfy that greed how to stop that i believe that at the school not a school but at the college university level there should be a kind of orientation that greed is so harmful to society to the family to the nation and that greed actually drives people to go for malinal laundry so so there should be some kind of curriculum uh, i mean in some in some form that uh, how greed actually brings people uh, to a uh, devastating situation this is one ab about the behavioral and attitudinal aspect of the money laundering now i come to institutional mechanisms can be devised i think that institutional mechanism can be devised or followed or formulated at the global level and at the local level at the local level fortunately almost all the banks have opened money laundering unit how to prevent that how to detect it and how to report to the government so th that is a positive matter that the banks are now quite quite alert about it and almost all the banks public and private banks are now quite quite uh, aware and quite sensitive to it now i begin with the global level because imf and world bank even i mean even body should have a supervisory jurisdiction on especially swiss bank because swiss bank is the symbol of receiving money laundered i mean money that is laundered and swiss bank should be should be seriously supervised by imf world bank and other uh, global level institutional mechanism and there should be a kind of policy at the global level to look into uh, i mean the sources of money money that is coming to swiss bank and why the swiss bank is allowing it and why there should not be any access and the super supervisory or in ins inspection about uh, who are depositing the money and who are who are who, what is their identity to detect them and to take measures accordingly and uh, now about the about the behavioral uh, aspect uh, people have not only the lack of sense of 
uh, they have the lack of sense of shame uh, in Bangla we call lodja. People have lost their sense of shame or shamefulness. Why? I think this is because of the parental uh, supervision at the very family level. The parents have a role to play to stop this greed and this, you know, uh, lack of sense of shame. You know, in our country, uh, beginning from Savar, that uh, Rana Plaza and all those and many other people, uh, they are uh, they are just uh, uh, sending their money. As somebody said that, uh, uh, you know, in, in Canada, there is a, a special region where people can safely send money and move around and, uh, you know, uh, they, they buy their properties. Uh, no problem about that. And I don't know, Canada is a very ethical country, but what, why Canada should, should allow it? That is a matter that should be taken up by the world bodies. And uh, lastly, I would say that uh, uh, at the local level, Bangladesh Bank should have a very, very uh, sharp surveillance. Bangladesh Bank, the central bank in our, in our case. So Bangladesh Bank can be can further gear up their supervisory and inspection on different banks, surprise inspection, surprise visit uh, by audit team or uh, audit team should be more uh, equipped with uh, their uh, paraphernalia to look into uh, the money laundering cases. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your impromptu comments on you know the recommendations and. Uh, I could I could see uh, uh, Dr. Adil Kenanda, Adil no. Nanda, uh, who, uh, uh, are you are you are you are you are you free to make some comments? Maybe for five minutes, Dr. Nanda, are you there? No, no, he's not there. Okay, he's, the he's not there. Okay, fine, fine. So that being so, uh, we can take five more minutes for question and answer and discussion. If you no. do have, sorry, may I suggest sorry, that you go straight to. Uh, the the uh, guest of honor, guest of honor. We like to listen to the guest of honor, and then to the oh. chief guest. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. Uh, so in that case, we skip this uh, question answer portion. We skip this flow discussion portion. Then let's go to the guest of honor, Professor Dr. Siri Hetize. Who is, she's the, he's the Professor Emeritus, University of Columbus, Sri Lanka. Professor ATG, sir. Yes, you have got 10 minutes. Thank you so much. He's, he has not joined us. He has not joined us? Then we no. go to the chief gate. Then we go to the no. chief gate. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Niloufar, I knew, it full, I knew it fully well that he's not here. But our chairman thought that he's there. Why? <laughs> He has okay, been keeping fine. Very well. I okay. mean, uh, in that case, in that case, can I, can I, can we squeeze five minutes time for our discussion? For maybe some questions or some comments, uh, because we are looking for some recommendations now. We had enough of in issues now. Enough of begum begum paras now. Now we like to get some uh, recommendations. Uh, Dr. Nuki Muslim gave us some recommendation in the form of prevention is better than cure greed governance, education curriculum, Swiss bank to be supervised if not dismantled, and then parental supervision, maybe religious teaching. Can we have some more recommendations now? We have enough of issues now. Can we have some recommendations? Next five minutes, please, quiet. If not, then we'll go to the chief, chief guest. Yes, Dr. Sapir, she has some, she has some recommendations. Yes, please go, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the money laundering, uh, it's a very, it's, it's really very, um, a, a, a great evil. It's devastating for the economy. And since uh, banks, I mean, the laundering happens through the banks. So I think it, there's a moral responsibility on the part of the bankers to ensure that, uh, you know, each, especially when the amounts transferred or any transaction 
of a large amount takes place. Uh, it's the responsibility of the banking officials to uh, scrutinize that kind of transaction properly. I mean, they have to, uh, I'll give you an example. I want to give you an example, for example, I mean, you know, in, an, uh, I don't know whether you know, there's a hill state called Nagaland. And uh, there, it was a very common practice. It is still, it is still, but at about 30 years ago, it was very easy for people to like, take loans. And then they would be just waived off as a bad debt. And that's because, you know, they were treated as special people. I mean, a backward state, as a special backward state. And, you know, they were granted that kind of freedom and everybody got away with it. Later on, uh, maybe after two, three years, I know about a couple of banking officials who were penalized. Uh, I had a class friend who was penalized. So um, uh, one of the recommendations I would like to give is that when somebody has a, an account, and I'm sure the, there are people, the staff, who know that you know this, is, this person has a huge amount of money or transfer, I mean, they know the transactions. So, uh, you know, keep, uh, uh, take them into some, bring them into some kind of conversation so that that person knows that you are aware of the fact that, you know, some hanky-panky may be going on. I think it's very important for the clients to know that they are being monitored. If uh, that, I mean, you're supposed to be secret. I know the banking transactions are supposed to be secret, but that is uh, not good enough now. Otherwise, this money laundering, which is, you know, going everywhere, whether we talk of drugs, whether we talk about prostitution, whether we talk about, you know, um, any other evil you talk about. And who, as I said earlier, who is suffering? It is always the lower sections that that section will never come up. That section will never come up. And uh, I'm very uh, sad and sorry to tell you that uh, I'm very concerned about my community here. I mean, uh, they don't have an, they don't get the chance to upgrade themselves. So money laundering has to be stopped somehow. This check has to be made by the banking officials or they can hire somebody. I don't know what. And although in our country, the central bank is there to you know, monitor all this, then as someone had already said, how does the money go to the Swiss bank? How is it that the Swiss bank doesn't know anything? So it's all, everybody's hand in glove with this. All the rich people want the money for themselves. And that's not good. That's not good enough. Um, just having a discussion, it's not good enough. We just, we've just got to stop it. And uh, uh, put a moratorium on, you know, uh, so much of transaction and take. I don't know, because we need uh, a market also, a market so that the money, uh, you know, circulates and all that. But uh, my thing is that the client and the banking official, everybody must be educated or educated. What I mean is everybody's educated. I mean, they must be uh, allowed to know that they are being monitored. And this must be kind of, they must, this kind of awareness drive has to be carried out. Otherwise, I mean, maybe a small beginning can be done. I don't know. I, I, please excuse me if it sounds too inane to any one of you. Please excuse me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sagar Islam. Uh, well, uh, before we go to the chief guest, is there any single comment or any question? If not, then we'll go to the chief guest. Any, I think if there's Mr. any. Mr. Yeah. Zainab Khan. Zainab yes. Khan wants to speak, say something. Please. We can't hear you. Zain Khan, he wants to. Dr. Nilufar, we cannot hear you. Zain Khan wants to say something. Who would like to say something? Say something, but he's Mr. Zain Khan. He wants to say something. He raised his hand. Oh, Mr. Jahid Khan. Okay, uh, let me see. Oh, Mr. Jain Khan. Okay, Mr. Jain Khan. Yes. Okay. Sir, he's talking, but he's muted. Sir, he's talking, but he's muted. Okay. 
Okay, okay, you are to unmute yourself. Mr. Jain Khan, you are to unmute yourself before you speak. Can you? Mr. Jain Khan, would you like to unmute yourself? Okay, that being so, uh, we have this te some technical problems. It goes on and on and on. I'm sorry about that. So let's go to the chief guest, uh, Professor Dr. Amita, Amita Singh. Uh, she is a noted professor of law uh, and on disaster research at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University. She is the Secretary General of Network of Asia Pacific School and Institution of Public Administration and Governance, NAPSIPAG. Uh, she is also a noted author and wrote many books in uh, prestigious, uh, published by prestigious. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, prestigious publishing house. And uh, so with, the, with that note, uh, may I request uh, Professor Dr. Amita Singh uh, to, to give her uh, speech as the chief guest of the ceremony. Over to Professor Dr. Amita Singh. Amita Singh ji, are you there? I don't see you. I don't yeah, see Yeah, please. Can I can I come back or is too late? This is Zen Khan. This is Zen Khan. Hello. Can I can I come back? I don't see her. Yes, this I think Mr. Zen Khan wants to say something again. He's a... Yes, can I come back? Can you hear me? Yeah, Zen Khan, go ahead. Uh, I think this money laundering business is a very old business and it is so widespread that we can have, uh, we can talk days on it. But to stop it, the main, main people who have to do it is our lawmakers. First, they have to make a law and to implement it. In most of our countries, we have a law, but the implementation is very poor because the lawmaker themselves are not honest about it. The money that we the money that is made illegally is starts from all sections of the people, particularly well-off sections. It starts from the lawmakers to the businessmen, to the bureaucrats, and to so many, so many people. And this money from our poor countries goes to the rich countries. Switzerland is the only, not the only one, it is everywhere. It is, it is UK, it is America, it is Canada, it is Dubai, wherever it goes. And sometimes the same money comes back in form of foreign investment. But that is not foreign investment, it is the money that I have sent, I bring it as a, in different name as a foreign investment. And so everything is so badly manipulated uh, in our society that uh, it will take a long time to sort it out. For in my own country, I feel that all the money that we have abroad, if it comes back, probably we will have no international loan. And, and this applies to many of our country in this region and in, Afri uh, in African region. Thank so you. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain Khan. And uh, since uh, I don't see uh, chief, the chief guest around, so I would request the chairman of the Policy Center Bangladesh PRCBD, uh, Professor Akbaruddin Ahmed, to make the concluding speech. Professor Akbaruddin Ahmed, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, all the uh, the guest speakers, the discussions, and uh, our CEO and the director of research and the tech support guys. Is it, this has been a very interesting session. And as, as we have been seeing on the 28th of every month, there is a special theme uh, that is announced earlier and is circulated to all our members all over the world. And then uh, the, the presenters are ready 
and the deliberation starts. End of the day, what happens is we make a recommendation and it goes to the various government departments uh, as a recommendation of the PRC. This we have been doing for the last many years. And uh, uh, this being extremely difficult period for Bangladesh with the pandemic and all that, uh, the budget preparation scheme was also very difficult. They, despite the fact that the economy has been growing at fantastic rate, 5.2% last year, 6.8% current year. And uh, basically, the country has been able to get out of property, poverty by the millions, by the millions. So the government has done a very great job. The worst thing is the money which is going out of the country, 7.5 billion US dollars, and it is targeted towards Switzerland and some other countries for parking. This is a massive amount for a country like Bangladesh. What is keeping us afloat is the wage earners' income, which is coming in steadily, and it is over 22 billion US dollars yearly basis, and along with the expo high export earnings from the government sectors and other sectors. So we are doing fairly well. Now, in this region, we are supposed to be having the second biggest economy in South Asia, which is certainly a great honor. And we have the uh, dividend of these young people ranging from the age 18 to 35. It's a huge uh, dividend. And uh, in massive scales, people are going out to the Middle East and to other countries, despite the pandemic, and they are sending in money in large scales. I would like to thank everyone for their time, and the deliberation, and we look forward to the next 28th with, uh, with another theme, and that has already been announced. It's on the banking sector, fully banking. And we have speakers from uh, UK, Canada, and other places, and Bangladesh, India, Nepal, etc. So we'll be discussing next month on the banking sector. Thank you very much, sir, and good night. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Akbaruddin Ahmed. And uh, uh, now, finally, uh, the vote of thanks. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be uh, requesting Dr. Nilufer, she's the di director of research, to give the vote of thanks on behalf of the Policy Research Center. And with that, I would request her to con con kindly conclude this conference. Thank you so much, all of you. Over to Dr. Nilufer. Thank you, Dr. Mahfouz, uh, for conducting this seminar so well. Uh, thank you, everyone. I would like to thank each one of you to ha have been present in this seminar and have taken part in this seminar so well. Uh, especially, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mr. Shah Alam for uh, giving his speech, although he had some technical problems, but uh, I think we have got to hear a lot from him. And I would like to thank also Mr. Latif Mahmoud, who, in spite of his little time, he could speak quite a bit on the, the problems of the uh, banking sector and the uh, recommendations he gave, some of the recommendations he gave. I would like to thank uh, Ms. Dr. Sabira Islam to have taken so much effort to prepare a paper that she sent. She uh, uh, took a little care to take because she had very little time. So I'm very thankful to her to have joined with us and I hope that she will join us in the future. I would like to thank also Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Nakib Muslim who's been very enthusiastic to uh, take part in our deliberations. And I'm very thankful that he has given us very practical uh, recommendations to take forward to the government and to the people. And if I have not missed anyone, I would like to thank you all again, also the chairman of the session, and Mr. Ashraf also, Colonel Ashraf, for his uh, recommendations for the uh, scam, uh, for the laundering and the scam that is taking place in Bangladesh. And also, I would like to end up by saying thank you, thank you again for this uh, uh, time that you have given us. 
So until next time, we will see you again on the 28th of June, and we will send you all the papers and the uh, deliberations to be given by the speakers. So we, we hope to see you next time uh, on the 28th of June. Thank you very much, and good night. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Good night. good night. See you all again. Uh, thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Thank yeah. Uh, uh, Professor Akbaruddin and Dr. Haik Nelufa. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Sabera, ma'am, nice to nice to meet, nice to uh, listen to you, Sabera, ma'am. <laughs> no. I was in a uh, meeting till about you know seven o'clock. We were having a meeting on research. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a PhD from Guwahati University, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. So. thank you for joining. Yes, so, oh, who, thank you. Thank who, you. Who, who, who did you do your PhD with? Uh, Dr. Sabina Yasmin. Sabina Yasmin. Department of Sociology. Oh, I see. I see. I see. No, I don't. And know. and Dr. Uh, Professor Kandarpa is my cousin's friend. You mean that uh, who's a vice chancellor right now? Uh, yeah, vice chancellor of of this uh, distance uh, learning. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, Handy is there of an university. Dr. Chandra, oh. thank you. If I missed thank you, Dr. Chandra, thank you, thank you. Th we want thank to you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Well. Thank you all. Shall no? Shall I close the program? Shall I close the program? Yes. Okay. Uh, Amita Singh, Amita Singh, still in Tuna. I tell you, another problem is that they are very busy people. They should be asked <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. You see, that is what we should do for the future. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Huh? Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good Thank night. You, good night, everyone. Uh, thank you, Lotif. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Lati. Good night. Sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, just a moment, please. Sure, please. Uh, my colleague, uh, two of my colleagues are also in, have participated, Dr. Dilo Arhak and um, okay, okay. Dr. Minu Sharma. Both of them are from Royal Global University. They were one of the participants today. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Inshallah. Uh, see you again. Yes. Soon. Inshallah. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, Shalom, sir. Yeah. Call or arranging some we couldn't timely uh, let us uh, hope no, no. that uh, our accommodation is implemented. Special thank thanks you, to all. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Salam alaikum. Good night.